any any doubt chapters three chapters are there second third and fourth okay sir i have sir they are the chapters for your test chapter number 2 chapter number 3 and chapter number 4 that is new kings and kingdoms delhi sultanate and the mughals okay those are the sir, chapters Come on! Somebody wants to ask something. I am not getting any sound. Okay, whatever it is, if you or sound is not coming here. Ah, uh, louder! Ah, uh, now come on. Can you hear me? Sir, ah. can you hear me now? Ah, I can hear. Now I can hear. Come on. Yes, sir. Send the notes of fourth chapter. Ah, very good. Okay. Let me see. Send the notes. Okay, okay. That is that. Ah, is good. Tomorrow I will. There is no possibility. Today, 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 and tomorrow I will try for that. Some activity. Sometimes I forget to reach home. That is it. Okay. Now we were discussing about the. Ah. Yeah. Come on, sir. There are no civics chapters. No civics chapters. Only history. These three chapters of history. No more. Okay. Civics. Okay, sir. We okay, may sir. think about in the annual examination time. Till that annual examination, there is no civics chapter. Civics chapters are completed. We had so many sir, tests. Sir, please send it in group also, sir. Ah, okay. Why you should attend the class? Some of your friends are not attending the class, but they want the information. Okay, I'll put up in group. Don't worry about it. Okay. Ah, now we will go to the philosophy. Geography, please. Geography, please. Sir, ask. geography, sir. Ah, please ask, Mr. Gobalai, sir. We have got the I have history thirty mark question. Sixty percentage is okay. of history. Thirty marks questions okay, are there. Okay. Okay. And fourteen uh, marks I have given on one word. True or false? Four. Ten. Um, finding out. Uh, finding the answers. MCQs. Okay. Then one four mark question and three three mark questions. This is a uh, format. Okay. Eleven a uh, ten. One mark questions. Find MCQs. True or false? Four. Three of uh, three mark questions. Four. So fourteen plus twelve twenty six. Last one four mark question. Four. So like thirty marks question. Okay. Clear. My dear students. Yes, sir. Ah, ah, okay. Yes, sir. Now yes, we will sir, come to the. Revise, sir, please revise uh, Delhi Sultanate. Sir, please revise Delhi Sultanate. Sir. Delhi Sultanate. What? What is the problem for Delhi Sultanate? Hmm. You read the test book. That's enough. Chauhans ruled Delhi. Then who were the Rajput rulers? Then how do you come to know about Tariq, Tawarik, Bartrai, gender distinctions? Okay. Hmm. Gender distinctions. Bartrai. Okay. All those things are there. What is? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Then we'll read a little more. Learn. What is what? Page number twenty thirty-three. You take. We'll discuss about little bit about that. Page number thirty-three. What Minhaj I Siraj thought about Razia? Okay. Minhaj I Siraj thought that Kuns ruled when they can as the ideal social order created by God. Because the custom, the thinking at that time, only male members can rule. Only they have got the capacity to look after administration. Now one lady is sitting on the crown or on the throne. When a lady is sitting on the throne, naturally she has to look up to administration. Now Minhaj Ayesha Raj 
was finding difficult to accept the reality. But traditionally, he has learned or he has studied that men are the rulers. So now, a woman is sitting in the throne. That she, he could not accept it. So that is why the question he is asking. Minha Jai Sri Raja Dordari Kuhn's rule went against the ideal social order. Ideal social order is ruled by the male members. That is created by, that is told by God. That is the argument he puts forward. In which women were supposed to be subordinate to men. He is not ready to treat or accept that women are equal to men. But he says women are subordinate to men. He therefore asked, in the register of God's creation, since her account did not fall under the column of men, how did she gain from all her excellent qualities? She shows the qualities of a good administrator, good ruler. So when she shows those qualities, which are said to be only for men, how did she get? That was a doubt of uh, Minha Jai sir. God might have mistakenly written her name in the place of a uh, female instead of a uh, male. That is a doubt uh, Minha Jai sir Ajisavi. Then we can see another. On her inscriptions and coins, Resia mentioned that she was a daughter of Salt Sultan Il Tutmush. She was not ashamed to say that I am a girl, I am a female, but I am the ruler. I am the ruler. So they were, she was so much able to show her rules and regulations. And in the coins she has written. But at that time, in India, there was a lady named Rudrama Devi. She was from Barangal, or belonging to Kakatiya dynasty. She was not ready to say that sir, a ruler, sir, there female. Are, there is a film of Rudrama Devi. Ah, yeah, okay, okay, very good. Sir, so she was not ready to say that she was, she was a female. She was a female. Because she had a doubt will uh, society accept her as a ruler. But here Razia is clearly stating I am a female but I am the ruler. As in contrast to the Queen Rudrama Devi of Kakatiya dynasty were part of modern Andhra Pradesh, Rudrama Devi changed her name in her inscriptions and pretended she was a man. She never proclaimed as a female. She every time proclaimed that she was a man. So it is a wrong thing from her part. Russia has accepted. There is another one. If you go in the history, there is another person named from uh, Kashmir. So her name, Dida. She ruled uh, from Kashmir. And she every time wrote down in her book or in her writings, Didi, elder sister. And she was not ready to say that I am the ruler. Everybody should treat me or respect me with the, the words of a ruler. That is what uh, Minha Jai Siraj. In the medieval period, we are, we are, I am going back to the word birthright. Birthright, you know. You know, you are born in your family, you have got some rights in your family. Still it is locked, huh? Oh. Okay. You have got some rights in the family. Once you are a member, you are about to get the shares of the property of the father or mother. So that is that's a birthright, which you are bound to get from the farm. So usually at that end the belief was the property. Now also it is most of the place it is happening. If a girl is born, she will be married off and she will go to other house. The male member will marry and she will bring them. So he is a person or the male member is a person who has to carry on the traditions of the family. That belief is there. So that is why the birthright. 
so if in a, any time till now we know it was like that in a how in a royal family if there is a male member and a female if the female female is the elder one male is the younger one the younger one gets the crown not the female the male who is younger gets the crown among if all are in the males the eldest male in the family gets the crown so that was a custom that is said to be the birth right so that birth right is that birth right is clearly followed in video ah oh, okay, okay yes sir your voice is not coming ah oh, okay okay some sir i am in the class <laughs> Hello, sir. Hmm. Oh, okay. Sorry, my dear students. I get I uh, I was I was having a call in between, official an official call. That's why I took it. Otherwise, I would have cut it. First, I cut again. The person called me again, so I have to listen to it. Okay. So we were discussing about birthright. Okay. Hello. Yes sir. Ah. yes sir yes sir so, yes sir i hope you understood what is birth right if you are born to a family you have got some rights and privileges so those rights at that time the birth right was that gender dis birth right along with the gender distinctions male members would get the hereditary, uh, hereditary post male members will get everything in the in the kingdom females will be married off so where there is no male they used to be adopt as person and give the crown to that person a male member that was a custom in the society in the modern period we know things are different at that time that was a custom the male members would be given the crown would be made the next king females have no choices even in european society everywhere in the world it was like that you know british queen she became the queen because she had no brothers if she had a brother that brother would have got it she had no brother so naturally the crown has to go has gone to the elder daughter of the king that is a custom so that is a gender distinction male and female distinctions of the society of that time and i have discussed about uh, uh, this one guys uh, this one is a circle of justice i have told you explained you once thanks sir i have described and explained about garrison town garrison town is a town where the soldiers are stationed our sine school campus we can say garrison town a protected area where the soldiers are living that is it garrison town then uh, so that is uh, then we will go to masjid the mosque you know what is the mosque administrations mosque and all those things i think i have explained you slaves the other than officials of mohammed bin tukluk mohammed tukluk okay i think i explain still i will read you uh, alauddin khalji and mohammed tukluk what is the difference between them did we explain i had explained once more i will explain to you what was the difference between the proposals and plans of mohammed bin tukluk and alauddin khilji page number 41 page number 41 it is delhi was attacked twice in 50 in 1299 and 1300 and 1302 and 1303 as a defensive measures alauddin khilji raised a large standing army you know what is standing army and normal army here in the during the medieval period standing army means the army who was selected by the king who are regularly trained and regularly paid the money that is a standing army the soldiers who would not be regularly paid only for the war time they will be called and they will be taken for fighting and after the war is over the army will be dis disbanded and the soldiers go go back to their homes or agriculture activities whatever work they were doing 
That is known as a standing army. Modern period, all the countries are having standing army. Our NCC battalion is not a standing army. Our regular army, who are territorial army, is there. One uh, wing is there in defence. They are not standing army. They will be called to fight when it, it is necessary. And they will have only training once in uh, in two months in a year. Other soldiers who are regularly in the part of the uh, defence, they will have everyday training if there is no war or anything else. So that kind of that is the difference. That is a standing army. So Alauddin Kilji raised a standing army. Let's see what Muhammad bin Tukla could do at that time. The Sultanate was attacked in the early years of Muhammad Tukla's reign. The Mongol army was defeated. That is what Alauddin, uh, sorry, Muhammad bin Tukla did. He went and attacked. Uh, Mongol, Mongolian threat only, Mongol, Genghis Khan's army coming to India, that was a threat. So they, he wanted to defend himself. Muhammad Tukluk was confident about the strength of his army and his resources to plan an attack on Transaxonia. He therefore raised a large standing army. He also raised a standing army. So both the, both the uh, so, uh, kings. Oh, Alauddin Kalji as well as uh, Muhammad bin Tukluk raised a standing army. But what happened? Alauddin constructed a new garrison town named Sri for his soldiers. Rather than constructing a new garrison town, the oldest of the four cities of Delhi was emptied of his residence and the soldiers garrisoned there. The residents of the old city were sent to the new capital to Daulatabad of, of South. So, the difference between administration of Alauddin Kilji and Muhammad. Alauddin Kilji made a new town and kept the soldiers there. At the same time, Muhammad bin uh, Tukluk, what did he do? That is why the blunders of his administration. Idea was good, but blunder it was in the beginning. Proper implementation has not done. What did he do? He sent all the residents, the people who are sitting in, uh, living in Delhi, told them, you go to Dawlatabad. Dawlatabad is in uh, Maharashtra. So he sent them to Dawlatabad. So once they, people left Delhi, and they have to come and settle down in uh, Dawlatabad. It was an inconvenient an unwanted action. So people were so much unhappy and angry. Because of that, what has happened, his step was a failure. It was considered as a failure, the administration. That's what we must understand. Okay. His step... Uh, Soldiers, so he and soldiers were garrisoned in Delhi. Naturally, that was needed. But you should not ask the people of Delhi to go to Dawlatabad. You should have taken another area in Delhi, as like Alauddin has done. That was a mistake of uh, Muhammad bin Tukluk. The soldiers had to be fed. Soldiers had to be given uh, food. This was done through the produce collector as tax. That was only means from lands between Ganga and Yamuna. The tax was fixed at 50% of the present sale. If a farmer is producing 10 kg of wheat, 5 kg should go to the king, compulsory, during the war time. Now also it is like, then when war is there, taxes will be heavy. Many of the th things you have to bear, problems will be there for the people. So the same thing, at that time, 50% tax. But when it came to the uh, Muhammad bin Tukluk, what did he do? Instead of 50% tax, he made it 90% tax. So naturally, people will be unhappy. They also want to food. They also want to survive. So 90% is taken by the king. Then how that with the 10% the people will survive? Naturally, there were protests against the decision of the king. So when uh, kings, the kings, uh, soldiers come with the uh, king, uh, tax collectors come with the soldiers. They forcibly take the materials. So there were protests against the Muhammad bin Tukluk's activity. So it was an utter failure. Then, 
when it comes to the salary to be paid to the soldiers allowed in collected taxes and paid mohammed bin tuklak made a new currency because why money payment is needed for soldiers because they want day to day activity expense why i should get my salary because i need food to eat i had to pay for my dress i have to pay for my other facilities for that government gives me money that is my salary a farmer gets the money when he sells the product whatever he produces i am not getting any money or any other so so i government gives me salary for my services that salary i use for purchasing the materials from the market or going somewhere whatever the necessities for me i use that money and survive so alauddin gilji what did he do he sent officers to the market took a strict action against anybody who raises the price of the material market price should be controlled government was very keen alauddin was very keen on controlling the prices of the materials when it came to mohammed bin tuklak he did not take that much he took a to um, token of currency like in a paper he wrote amount and gave it to the people so people are ex- excellent no they will make a duplicate currency and they began to use it so that duplicate currency they used to send to the king at as tax so duplicate currency now also we know fake note printing is there so same way fake note they pre- began to print so printing fake note became easy because the the that in coin coins were made with cheap metal not with gold if it is made with gold ordinary people cannot make golden coin, uh, currency or coins so he made it with cheap currency cheap metal which was easy obviously available so the so the ordinary people also made fake currencies and they began to use it so naturally government had a heavy loss money was not coming to the government so that was a mistake of uh, mohammed bin tuklak so in long run we must understand uh, mohammed um, alauddin uh, alauddin's administration was good and mohammed bin tuklak's administration was a, a failure shifting of capital introduction of token currency all those things had come to come as a failure for indian society okay then sultanate of the 15th century we have discussed all those things okay then question answers who which ruler first established his or her capital in delhi that is a who was that a? who was that ah it is there in the first page of this chapter tomaras it is a tomaras among pala he was the first person to make delhi as a capital what was the language administration under the delhi sultanates arabic in whose reign did sultanate reach its farthest extent mohammed bin tuklak from which country did, uh, did ibn batuta travel to india morocco what is what did ibn batuta say what was the statement of ibn batuta hmm what was the statement of ibn batuta ha ah, ibn batuta has told about the fortifications he was from morocco morocco is a country in africa i think i have shown you in the map also where is morocco how and hmm what is it somebody is presenting something blocking my sights okay can you hear me boys and girls hello
can you hear me no sound hello respond my dear cadets why what is the problem sound is not coming out you cannot unmute yourself ah can you hear me okay now we will continue with our chapter ah devotional pass now philosophy of um, bhakti are you listening to me hello cadets can you hear me why so अच्छा 